amazing. I am just so impressed with you, young folk. Honestly, um, I applaud you completely. Um, it's been very interesting for me tonight because there's been a lot about digital literacy. And for me, digital literacy comes down to participation in society. And that is why we have to make our students digitally literate. What I'm going to do today is, um, or this evening, is I'm going to show you a project that I undertook in schools with uh, some teachers. Uh, I had eight schools in East Dunbarton. And I asked them to do uh, moving image projects with their children. <coughs> and I actually wanted to look at how they implemented them, what kind of control they had, what kind of control the children uh, got or were given, uh, what kind of choices they had, uh, what kind of decision making they had, uh, a whole lot of things, which I'll speak to you about after you've seen the movie, um, which isn't the next slide. Is this a thing in this? So, I actually think that learning in the 20th, 21st century is completely different now to how we learned even 10 years ago. And it's certainly different to uh, how I learned when I was at school. I think learners need to be creative, innovative, critical and participative. And for that, you as teachers need to empower them. No longer do we use the jug and mug method where we just fill up the kids with the knowledge, our knowledge. Now we are going, we're shifting, we're now more of a facilitator. Um, but how can we do that? How can I get the screen to move even? <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, where are you? There you go. I spoke about being participants in society. Let's have a wee think about what we do outside school. Um, that first picture there is about the tsunami. Um, and it wasn't... We weren't told about it through the normal broadcasting routes. It was actually amateur spectators who took photographs and who took videos and then sent them to the networks. So, in other words, it was normal, everyday Joe Blogs who was presenting the news. And that's what you do. And that's what our children will be involved in. The second one is just an example of how you can be participating in what's happening in your country. That's, um, what's the guy's name? <laughs> well done. <laughs> Stephen Gately, who died a few years ago. And there were lots of condolences put onto Facebook. And people, you know, just poured out how they felt and share their grief with each other. That's participating. But, unfortunately, a daily com columnist in the Daily Mail called John Moyer actually said he died because of a result of being homosexual. That created an absolute outroar. Uh, everyone hated it, and so everyone posted it even more on Facebook. And they were taking the feeling of a nation forward by participating in society. Now, I'm saying we need to educate our children to be <coughs> participants in society, but we can't do it overnight. So what I'm suggesting is that it's small, <coughs> leverage factors that will make a difference. And we've seen tonight a whole lot of factors that could make that difference. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> project that I was speaking to you about. These children were given complete ownership of the, uh, the, the project and it was a different way of story writing for them. They had to collaborate, they had to make decisions um, and they had to get on as a team. So let's have a quick look at this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
baloney. I don't even ask him nicely. <laughs> spoke about the product, okay? And that's generally what we tend to look at when we're in schools. It's all about uh, testing and assessments and we have to see the finished product and that's our evidence. So this is what they said about the children's writing and unless I speak without vowels, I don't have time to tell you that, just read it. Um, but interestingly, teachers, without me having to say, you know, having to prompt them, they actually came up with something more than about just the product. They came up with the process and they were talking about the ways which children behaved. And they talked about learning dispositions the children had and that they, that were developed through this project. Um, so hopefully when you go out into schools you'll do this sort of thing. And I think we're finished. Oh yeah. And it's just a list of things that, I, that came out of my research. Um, that it was a very collaborative. <laughs> it is a really powerful learning tool. Um, there's issues of power. Are you willing to hand over to the children? Are you willing to say to the children, "Well, I, actually, I do value you. You can do this," and give them that responsibility. Um, <coughs> you have to give children choice. Um, if you do all that find that children become more perseverant, they have a great deal of pride in their skills as well as what they do, um, they engage more.